Jesus is either everything or he's nothing. We can't say like the Doobie Brothers, Jesus is just all right. <laughs> Jesus is either everything or he's nothing. Because he made one big claim. He claims to be God. And he either is God or he is not God. If he is God, then I should love him with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. He should be my everything. If he's not, then he shouldn't really matter to me. If he's not God and he knew it, boy, he's evil. Because he has convinced 2,000 years of people to worship a false god. If he thought he was God and he was wrong, well, he's crazy. And I'm not interested in following someone with that kind of a delusion. Jesus is either everything or nothing. If his body is still in a tomb somewhere, if his remains are still on this earth, then we're wasting our time. We should just level this building. We should be doing something else right now. It's a waste of our time. But we have so much evidence that Jesus rose from the dead. It all hinges on that. If Jesus really rose from the dead, then everything he claimed about himself has to be true. He must be God if he really rose from the dead. And we do have evidence for that. There's an empty tomb. We don't have his remains here on earth. We have countless witnesses. We hear several of them uh, in the Gospels about uh, people encountering Jesus. Jesus talking to them, teaching, eating, uh, being touched by them. We hear in 1 Corinthians that at one time Jesus appeared to hundreds of people. We have countless witnesses to Jesus' resurrection. Jesus is really risen from the dead. Jesus is exactly who he said he is. If that's the case, then he deserves a lot of our attention, right? We better be paying attention to what Jesus has to say because he's got a lot to say about who God is, about how to live, about sin, about mercy. He also makes some beautiful promises. He promises joy. He promises peace. He promises rest. He promises abundant life. And he promises a new start in him. Last week, if you attended my mass on Palm Sunday, you heard me preach about the naked guy in the gospel. In Mark's version of the Passion, we hear about a naked guy. We hear about Jesus being arrested in the garden and all of the disciples flee in fear because they're afraid they're also going to get arrested. And we're told that there's one young man who's in the garden. We don't know his name. He was there that night. He was wearing just a, a linen garment. And while he also is trying to flee, in the process, he loses the garment and he runs away naked. And so I was talking about how there's a theory about who this person is, that really this person is more of a symbol for us. That this guy has been clothed with this garment, this white garment, probably represents baptism. We have two people tonight who are going to be baptized, and they'll be clothed with a white garment. It's a sign that they belong to Jesus. They've been clothed with Christ. This young man left behind his Christian identity and fled that night in fear. Perhaps Mark is trying to tell us that when discipleship gets difficult, we could do the same thing. We might find ourselves, sadly, running away from Jesus. When being a follower of Jesus becomes difficult, we abandon that Christian identity and we go somewhere else. Maybe it happens with that uncomfortable conversation with somebody about our faith, and we decide, I don't want to have that conversation again. So we begin to abandon our faith and follow something else. Maybe it happens when we realize that, boy, living the Ten Commandments is really hard. I'm having a real hard time overcoming this particular sin, and kind of in despair, we leave behind that Christian identity and we go another way. Or maybe we've been faithful for some time, but the experience of prayer is just terrible lately. It feels like God is nowhere. There was a time when it felt so close, and now we feel so far. And maybe just in discouragement, we give up and we abandon the Lord. We've left behind that Christian identity. Maybe that is the end of the story of the naked guy in the gospel, maybe. If so, it's an important message for us to hear. I'm encouraged by the fact that we have a God who never lets that be the end of our story to the best of his ability. He's gonna chase us down. If you've been listening to these readings, we just listened to eight readings. 
and several psalms. And throughout those readings, God is revealing himself to us as one who's always pursuing us. He's our creator. He's our Lord. He's our protector. He's our provider. He's a husband. He's a friend. He's a father. And he never gives up on his people. No matter how many times God's people abandon him, try to leave their identity behind as God's people, he just keeps seeking them out. He never gives up on us. Jesus doesn't give up on us. Jesus tells us about the prodigal son, the father waiting for that son to come back. So maybe this young man's story ends with him leaving behind that identity and fleeing, maybe. But I have a theory. You look at today's gospel. We hear about the women going to the tomb. They're, they're carrying spices and oils, and they're going to anoint Jesus' body. And they're, they're wondering who's going to move that gigantic rock. It usually takes several men to move a rock this big, and they don't think they can do it by themselves. They show up. The rock is already moved out of the way. And they look into the tomb, and there's a young man seated in a white garment in there. Isn't that interesting? Same gospel. There's a young man seated in a white garment. Now, usually if it's an angel, people are terrified. These women don't seem afraid of this guy. Probably not an angel. And he gets to tell them that Jesus has risen. He did lay here, but he's not here anymore. He's, he's risen in his body. And tell the disciples to go to Galilee, and Jesus is going to meet him there, meet them there. They will get to encounter the risen Lord. So here's my theory. That young man fled that night on Holy Thursday out of fear. But God was working in his heart. And he repented of fleeing. And he went back to that garden and he put that white garment back on, that Christian identity. And then he followed Jesus the rest of the way. He followed Jesus as he's condemned by Pilate. He follows Jesus all the way to the cross. He stays with Jesus outside the tomb all of Holy Saturday. My theory is that he was the first one to be there when Jesus himself, as God, moves that rock out of the way and steps out of the tomb in his body. And then Jesus entrusts to this young man to stay and tell the others that he's risen from the dead. That's my theory. Because we have a God of redemption. We have a God who loves to give new beginnings. And I think this young man has been given a new beginning to be present for the resurrection and to get to proclaim that good news that Jesus has risen. Jesus is exactly who he said he is. He deserves to be our everything. Hopefully we recognize ourselves a little bit in that young man. Maybe we notice within ourselves a time in our life or times in our life that we also left behind our Christian identity to do our own thing. Maybe we fell away from the faith for a while. Maybe it was even just for a moment because we want to go do this sin and we didn't want to bring Jesus with us. Maybe we find ourselves identifying with him in that way. If you're still in that place, okay, you're here. You get to begin again right now. Just like that young man turned back around maybe and picked up that garment and put it back on and started over, you can do the same thing. We have a God of new beginnings. That's what the resurrection is about, is to give us new life, to give us a new start. Jesus promises us love and joy and peace, abundant life and a new beginning. Jesus wants to be your everything.